welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market, where I take a look at the luxury market, the Manhattan market, and the Brooklyn market. I do it because I want you to be informed. It never hurts when you're a consumer to be informed. Welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. As always, I bring you the very latest in what's happening in the luxury market, the Manhattan market, and the Brooklyn markets. I do it so that you can stay informed, make great decisions. If you're interested in staying current on what's happening in the market, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get started. Let's first, as we always do, take a look at the luxury market for Manhattan. There were 28 contracts signed last week in the luxury part of the market. That would be for properties that are priced at $4 million and above. That is for the week of May 30th to June 5th. That's seven more than the previous week, which is kind of remarkable when you factor in that that also includes Memorial Day. Condos, outsold co-ops, 20 to 4, and there were four townhouses in the mix. So let's take a look at the number one and number two contracts that were signed last week in the luxury market. The number one contract went to a unit at 109 East 79th Street. It was the second time this year that the number one slot went to this building. This time it was 6W, it was asking 16.85 million. Condo has a little over 4,100 square feet. It includes five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms. It features a 32 foot living room with ceiling heights of 17 feet, six inches. It's a new two story, 31 unit condo designed by Stephen Harris Architects. The completion of this building is expected in the fourth quarter of this year. Amenities include a doorman, regulation size, squash court that converts to a basketball court, a gym, a golf simulator, a game room, and a spa treatment center. 27 of the 31 units have sold with asking prices averaging a little over $4,000 a square foot, $4,035 to be exact. Okay, so now let's take a look at the number two contract. It was unit 1015 at 225 West 86th Street. It was asking 11.15 million. This pre-war condo has 4,124 square feet. It includes four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, and a library. It also features a 31 foot living room and an eating kitchen with Molteni cabinets. The master bedroom overlooks the gardens. The building's called the Bell Nord. It's a rental turned condo with a renovation designed by Robert A.M. Stern. Amenities include a doorman, a fitness center, a children's playroom, and a lounge. So let's now shift and we're going to take a look at some statistics for last week. The total weekly asking price sales volume was $190,409,000. The average asking price $6,800,321. The median asking price, $6,130,000. The average discount from original ask to last asking price, 3%. And average days on the market, 347. So we're used to seeing these kinds of discounts in the luxury market. And we've seen some bigger discounts in previous weeks, but it looks like we're kind of back to at least over this last week to kind of what we were seeing around 3%, which isn't bad considering the prices that they're asking. And the days on market, 347. Again, a lot of these are new construction, so not really so very, what's the word? Unusual <laughs> to see that. It takes time to sell these new properties. And while not all of them were new construction, a good number of them are, which I think skews the days on market. Okay, that is it for the luxury market. Nice to see that rebound. Let's take a look at what's happening in Manhattan. It's kind of an interesting thing. We are seeing a market in transition. We don't exactly have enough data to really point to exactly where this market is going. 
but we are beginning to see some trends. So let's take a look at this. There were, just on a weekly basis, we saw the supply go up. Almost 500 properties came on the market. That's almost 50% more than the week before. But I will say this, when we look at supply, we're also looking at this in a bigger way. And when you look at it in a bigger way, what we're seeing is the supply is kind of going sideways. It's not necessarily really up. Yes, last week it was up 50%, but overall what we're seeing is a kind of a trend of the supply increasing still up in comparatively if you compare it with other years. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, it's really a little too early to tell. If I had to predict, though, I would say we're going to continue to see properties coming on the market. So we're going to continue to see more inventory coming on the market. And, you know, maybe that's an exciting piece of news for buyers. Sellers, what this is going to mean for you is that you have to be careful with your pricing. But I always say that. So it's not really news. You get your best deal done in the first 30 days. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go on. So we see that the supply was up from the week before. Contract activity in Manhattan also, it was down uh, about 1% last week, but overall we're kind of seeing it going sideways. So we're not seeing any really big shifts as of yet, but it's a little too early to tell as we transition into the summer market. It will be interesting to see how the market does shift as we move into the summer months. One thing to note though is that pending sales in Manhattan are still really strong. If you take a look at the charts that I'm sharing with you, you'll see if you compare our pending sales now, they are still pretty strong when you compare them to, to let's say 2019. 2021 it was just sort of a crazy year, but let's take as we compare it to 2019 and even 2021 for that matter, it's still going pretty strong. If you look at the weekly contract activity though, it's still pretty strong and certainly uh, it's above 2019. 2021 was just kind of its own year, but when you compare what's happening right now to 2019, our weekly contract signed is still pretty strong comparatively. Is there a buyer's market on the horizon? It kind of is looking like there could be, but again, you know, we're still, seasonally speaking, we are still ahead of the game and as far as our contract activity and demand and all of that. But there's some indicators that we're starting to see. And again, we're collecting the data now, but would suggest that there could be a, a shift in the market enough to shift this from where it currently is, which is still a seller's market. We're not seeing a lot of negotiability unless it's property's been sitting on the market for a long time. What we probably will begin to see, though, is a shift to being a little bit more in the buyer's camp. So let's see what happens with that. And now let's take a look at what's happening in Brooklyn. We saw supply go up almost 40%. 281 properties came on the market. There were 158 contracts signed. Now, while that was down week over week, about almost 25%, if you look at the contracts being signed, you'll see that, you know, for every listing, 1.2 contracts are being signed. So we're still really in the seller's market, but, you know, as that gets closer, <laughs> could fall. We're seeing signs of that in Manhattan, Brooklyn. It's important to remember that even Brooklyn, as strong as it has been going, is not immune to a slowdown. So let's take a look at this. We're beginning to see signs of that. Now, what are some of those signs? Well, we are seeing a little more inventory overall, and we are seeing a bit of a slowdown in the last few weeks of the demand. And while it's not yet reflected in the prices, we, again, sometimes it takes a little while for we, us to really get the data points specifically about 
how what kind of adjustments are being made in the prices. But for the moment, if you are a seller in Brooklyn and you have been on the market less than 30 days and you're getting a lot of activity and a lot of offers, it's a pretty good indicator that you are on the right track and have adjusted or are adjusting for where this particular market is at. One of the things that's going to be really challenging, whether you're whether it's the luxury properties or the properties in Manhattan or in Brooklyn, will be to price for this shifting market. It's very important, as I've said many times, very important. If you want to make the most money, you want to get your deal done in the first 30 days of being on the market. That's when buyers perceive that it has the greatest value. And that is, as you'll see in the chart, you will see that we are there's the least amount of negotiability when properties sell within the first 30 days or go into contract. Once you get into 60 to 90 days, you start to see those discounts sell. The challenge for uh, sellers and for their agents and brokers is to make sure that they really try to get the pricing right out of the gate. Not going to be easy, but but really important. So that those are my thoughts on pricing overall. And that is what happened in Brooklyn last week. And what remains to be seen where this is going. You know, will we see a little bit of a slowdown in both the Brooklyn and the Manhattan market? Seems like it's on the horizon, but it's not here yet. So let's just continue to see how this plays out. Okay, and that's it for this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. I'll be back with more up to the minute market news about the luxury market, the Manhattan market and the Brooklyn market. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below, reach out, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to keep seeing these reports. In the meantime, take care.